welcome to another World in Five. And today I'm at the Pont Casolte Aqueduct, which is a World Heritage Site in the Welsh border near Wrexham. Now, the Pont Casolte Canal, or viaduct, was originally part of a canal project that was devised in 1793 and was based, the aim was to construct a canal from the River Mersey to the River Severn connecting the industrial centres and mining areas in the Welsh borderlands and Shropshire to the port of Liverpool. Now the canal project was organised and governed by William Jessop and Thomas Telford and in fact it was the project that made Thomas Telford's name and made him the world famous engineer that he became in the late 1700s and early 1800s. Now one of the challenges that Thomas Telford had in the construction of this viaduct or the whole canal project um, was the valleys in Wales. Now you get in there with these deep ravine valleys such as the one we're in now which is the River Dee. You can hear the waterfall just to the side of me over there. And these valleys presented quite the challenge for an, as far as an engineering project is concerned. Obviously the canals have to be relatively flat so you don't get the fast flowing water that you do within a river system. Now, planning started in 1793 and the first stones to be laid for the viaduct was on the 25th of July 1795. Part of the first section, this part of the viaduct to be opened was the church for aqueduct, which is a little further down that way. It's also part of this whole World Heritage Site. Now that was open, Chirk Aqueduct was open in 1801 and the Ponte Casolte Aqueduct was opened up in 1805. Side note, same year as the Battle of Trafalgar. So, you know, just put it into the context of that. The Napoleonic Wars were going on whilst this aqueduct and canal project was being constructed. Well, by 1795, the decision had been made that the whole canal project was going to be uneconomical and so they abandoned it with but leaving sections such as the, the aqueduct behind me still intact and they still carried on construction because they were going to provide uh, canal access to Thangothan and Thomas Telford had already started working on canal section in Shrewsbury it's part of the Shropshire Union Canal project and he'd actually learnt a lot about the construction of viaducts from much smaller viaducts at London on Turn just north of Telford. So he took the knowledge that he'd learned from, from London and applied it to the Ponte Casolte viaduct. The viaduct crosses the Dee Valley here and is a very impressive 307 metres long. Bear in mind this bridge was constructed in the late 1700s, so yeah, it was 307 metres long, it's 3.7 metres wide, including the towpath and the canal itself and at a maximum height it stands 38 metres above the valley floor. It was constructed of a cast iron base with a watertight ceiling being made out of uh, linen, hair, cloth, ox blood and sugar. And the original lining is still in use, it doesn't leak still. So testament to Telford's engineering there, in fact that lining is still, still working. The cast iron trough of the viaduct sits on top of 18 hollow masonry pillars. You can see right behind me, fantastic one there, smack bang in the middle of the river D. The Ponce Consulte Aqueduct is the longest aqueduct still navigable and still in use within Britain and is the tallest aqueduct anywhere in the world. It was added to the UNESCO World Heritage Site List 2009, which is great because it provided extra funding to help maintain the site. And as a side note, you can still find Thomas Telford's uh, viaduct in Long Gone Turn. It still exists and you can have a wander around there. My thoughts on the site? It's really easy access if you want to have a walk across the top of the viaduct. However, the towpath is narrow. There aren't any passing places, so if you're scared of heights, it might provide you with a bit of a problem. There is a small parking charge. I paid three pounds for the car park. Historical value, 
fantastic. I think it's probably a four out of five. It gives you an idea of the beginnings of mass engineering that took place in the Industrial Revolution. And from a natural history perspective, there's not a lot here, but it does give you an idea of what the ingenuity that is involved for the people have had to be so creative in overcoming the natural barriers that they face within their local landscape. And that is my one in five.